What if the billions poured into Alzheimer's research delivered only tiny benefits while safer, simpler options were ignored? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Today, we're examining why the amyloid theory became medicine's default answer to dementia, how that bet failed, and what affordable approaches have shown promise for cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's. I'm Ethan Foster. You've heard for decades that abnormal amyloid plaques are the villain behind memory loss. Much of the scientific establishment and funding followed that idea, directing enormous resources toward clearing amyloid from the brain. I'm Alara Skye. The results have been disappointing. After decades and billions of dollars, the amyloid focus has produced only three drugs with minimal clinical benefit and frequent serious side effects. Meanwhile, straightforward therapies that help cognition have been sidelined or maligned. When a paradigm underdelivers, science should revisit first principles. By the mid 2000s, evidence was mounting for other drivers of cognitive decline, including chronic inflammation. Yet, the amyloid juggernaut persisted. In 2006, a Nature paper promoted a toxic amyloid oligomer, A beta star 56 as causative for dementia in animal models. That publication became a citation pillar for the field. Skepticism never fully disappeared. Labs reported difficulty replicating the findings and concerns accumulated about image integrity in key papers. Years later, investigators uncovered clear evidence of manipulated Western blots across multiple publications tied to that line of research, including the seminal 2006 paper which was eventually retracted, long after it helped lock in the amyloid agenda and the funding that followed. While controversy simmered, approvals arrived. The first monoclonal antibody targeting amyloid moved forward despite an FDA advisory panel voting overwhelmingly against it and several advisors resigning in protest. Priced at a level that provoked a congressional inquiry, it delivered no meaningful improvement in cognition and carried a high rate of brain swelling and bleeding. Subsequent antibodies followed with similar themes. One showed a modest slowing of decline measured in fractions of a point on clinical scales while still causing brain edema or hemorrhage in a substantial portion of recipients. Another, also aimed at amyloid plaques presumed more pathologic, again demonstrated limited benefit alongside frequent adverse brain effects. Financial conflicts of interest within advisory processes later came to light. These outcomes teach hard lessons. First, repeatedly stripping amyloid has not restored memory or function in a way patients and families can truly feel. Second, provoking immune responses in brain tissue carries risk, reflected by swelling, bleeding, headaches, and infusion reactions reported in trials. Third, Anchoring research to a lucrative target can crowd out promising, non-patentable strategies. Let's talk about those strategies. One randomized controlled trial tested medium-chain triglycerides derived from coconut. Over six months, 80% of participants remained stable or improved, performance surpassing what the amyloid drug trials have reported without the brain bleed risks and at a fraction of the cost. Many readers have also described noticeable improvements in relatives with dementia when coconut oil was introduced. Another evidence-based avenue is the RECODE protocol. It starts by identifying the drivers of an individual's cognitive impairment because different mechanisms can produce similar symptoms and then applies targeted natural therapies to address those specific causes. In 2022, a study using this approach documented meaningful gains that should have reshaped the field's priorities. There's also DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide. Its neuroprotective actions have spared stroke and spinal cord injury patients from outcomes once considered irreversible. Decades of overlooked research, animal and human, indicate benefits for memory and cognition. Studies have shown DMSO protecting neurons when blood flow is reduced, improving learning and memory after injury models, and counteracting experimental setups that induce dementia-like deficits. 
Human observations range from improved memory, communication, and orientation over a few months to better function among older adults whose cognitive issues stemmed from vascular problems or concussions. Personal accounts echo those findings. Cases of regained speech, clearer thinking, and calmer behavior in long-standing dementia after introducing DMSO. While anecdotes aren't trials, their consistency alongside controlled research argues for attention rather than dismissal. Why then do these options remain obscure? The incentives in modern medicine reward patentable molecules and the biochemical storylines that justify them. When simple tools threaten profitable narratives, they are frequently minimized or framed as implausible, regardless of their track records. We also need to reckon with the cost of clinging to a shaky foundation. The amyloid framework absorbed enormous sums, shaped careers, and channeled patient expectations. Even after research fraud surfaced in Cornerstone work, accountability was slow and incomplete. Institutions insisted the conclusion still stood, and investment continued. None of this diminishes the urgency families feel when memory slips, names vanish, or independence fades. It means you deserve a research agenda and clinical playbook aligned with outcomes, not market momentum. Encouragingly, studies on metabolic support with MCTS, individualized protocols such as R-E-C-O-D-E, and neuroprotective agents like DMSO point toward avenues where cognition stabilizes or improves. If you're navigating early cognitive changes, the takeaway is not to pin hopes on amyloid removal. Seek out approaches that identify and address underlying contributors to your decline. Evaluate interventions that already demonstrate functional benefit and acceptable safety. Pay attention to therapies that have helped real people in trials and in practice even if they don't come wrapped in blockbuster marketing. Here's today's challenge. If cognitive decline touches your life, write down the top three changes you've noticed in the last six months. Then bring that list to a discussion about non-amyloid options, such as MCTS from Coconut, an individualized assessment modeled on R-E-C-O-D-E, -E, or learning more about DMSO's evidence base, and decide one concrete step you will take this week. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.